What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop, and today we're going to be talking about fake watches, and by the end of this video, I'm going to be destroying one with an axe. Let's do it. Boom, watch fam. All right, before we get in, a quick wristwatch check. I am wearing my personal date chest. Reference 1601, the gorgeous blue dial, uh, dates to 1977. This watch has uh, changed my life, and many of the people out there uh, who can kind of feel so sentimental and so personal about a watch, I'm sure you kind of get my feeling. Uh, we did a whole video on this watch when it turned 40. Uh, Anna, please put the link down in the description. Please watch this video. It was, it was amazing, and I think that it'll resonate with a lot of you. So, now, let's get into fake watches. Let's start off with some pretty crazy statistics. In 2014, law enforcement seized $375.4 million worth of fake watches. In 2016, that number jumped to $653.6 million. Today, the Federation of Swiss Watches estimates that 40 million counterfeit watches are produced annually, 25% more than Switzerland's entire yearly output. According to the Federation, fake annual sales now amount to $1.08 billion in sales annually. So we can definitely establish that we're talking about significant numbers, and those significant numbers warrant conversation. So let's start here. Why buy a fake watch? Well, because you want one of two things. The clout of wearing, let's say, a Submariner without paying the price, or two, the feeling of wearing a Submariner without paying the price. And today, both of those things are possibilities. While historically, fake watches were atrocities, total bastardizations of rich designs, they've become damn near perfect. Now, fakes are called super fakes, and they're nearly indiscernible. So, why are fakes bad? Well. I'm not in love with the argument that the purchasing of replica watches enables business that both utilizes unethical, meaning underpaid or underage labor, and funnels back to terrorism because one, it is of course circumstantial, and two, many of our favorite companies do the same. So I feel like a little bit of a hypocrite. So here's why I hate fake watches. Wearing one is posturing. If you weren't trying to front or, or to posture, you wouldn't be wearing something that is inherently deceiving. For example, I live near a Guido, I mean a real juice head. And this guy struts around all day long wearing a, a Yachtmaster 2. But his Yachtmaster 2, either one, has wear to his gold plating, and two, has a date function as opposed to a sub-second at six. Which to me is horribly embarrassing. You're walking around pretending as if you bought a $15,000 watch or more, uh, and many people, not just one person, many people can see that you're full of shit. Now, there are people out there that are actually honest about their fakes. They're not trying to trick anyone. And to those people, I say, hey, I disagree with you. I think that fakes are rough and bad, but salute. You're being honest and we can agree to disagree. So I can't just be all doom and gloom. I need to propose a uh, alternative solution. What should you buy instead? Take Stoa, for example. Their Flieger Classic, which comes in around $1,000, is not just a super well-designed and manufactured watch, but it's significant and original. As one of the five original manufacturers of Luftwaffe Pilots watches in the 1930s, the other brands being IWC, Vempe, Leiko, and Langenzone, it's a real piece of history. Or even if you really want that Rolex look, take a look at any number of the brands out there like Steinhardt that produce homage watches that replicate Rolex almost exactly, but at least the name on the dial is the truth. There's no deception. All right, so now let's go smash a watch, which I might add is a total fake piece of shit. Let's start here. 
I'm a lifelong believer in the power of a conservative steel oyster case. These 60s and 70s dates have a modern elegance about them. While the prior generation of dress watches, like the Vacheron Constantin I'll be getting into in a minute, was all about thinness and precious metal, 